My favourite type of management theory are those that explain things that are otherwise confusing. And Frederick Hertzberg's two-factor theory is very much that kind of theory. Have you ever noticed that some things that people seem to want a lot don't actually motivate them when they get them? Well, that's what Frederick Hertzberg explained with his two-factor theory. He studied a whole range of things that ought to make people feel good at work. And he found that there are different things that either make us satisfied or not satisfied. And he found that motivation is not the opposite of demotivation. Rather, there are two separate scales. There are things that motivate us and there are things that demotivate us. And that's the burden of his work. In an extended series of interviews about what satisfies people at work, he found there were certain things that satisfy us and he called these motivators. On the other hand, there are certain things that leave us unsatisfied. Yet, if we fix them, people don't suddenly feel motivated. They just stop feeling demotivated. And he called these hygiene factors. And he suggested that if hygiene factors aren't satisfied, then we feel demotivated. Satisfying those hygiene factors restores us back to a balanced, neutral position. On the other hand, once we're in that neutral position, if we get motivators, these make us feel enthusiastic and very positive about our workplace. So let's take a look at the motivators and the hygiene factors that Hertzberg identified. Motivators tend to be intrinsic to our relationship to our work. It's about the work we do. Consequently, achieving stuff, making progress, being recognised for the work that we've done, and just the feeling of doing good and worthwhile work, they are all motivating. So too is responsibility. The autonomy to direct our own work and maybe that of others as well. And as a consequence, a feeling of advancement, not only in our careers, but in our knowledge, in our understanding. Where that advancement comes from, the fruits of our own endeavour, that's motivating too. And so too is emotional, mental, psychological growth. The sense that we are a better person than we were before. Hygiene factors, on the other hand, tend to be external to the actual work that we're doing. In fact, I like the word hygiene factors because a great example is the hygiene of washrooms and of kitchens in our workplace. Nobody is going to sing the praises of their employer just because the washrooms are clean and tidy and the kitchens are well cared for. But as soon as they start to slip in standards and the washrooms are not comfortable and the kitchens are not well cared for, people will soon complain. They will be demotivated very quickly. So hygiene factors include things like corporate policies, the administration, the way the organisation is run and the administration that we're required to do. Um, it's also to do with uh, the way we're supervised and managed. Our salary tends to be a hygiene factor if we're not paid what we think is fair. And you might like to look at the video on John Stacey Adams equity theory uh, for this. But if we're not paid what we think is fair and we're not rewarded properly, then we are demotivated. If we're rewarded fairly, we're not motivated. We're just back to that neutral state. And alongside that are working conditions and our status in the workplace. What Hertzberg found is that people working in a good basic workplace where the hygiene factors are satisfied will be motivated when you introduce the motivators. On the other hand, if the hygiene factors aren't satisfied, then no amount of motivators are going to make them feel good about working there. So what that tells us is we need to sort out hygiene factors first, make sure that we've got them right 
and then build motivation up. Hertzberg also talked about KITA factors. K-I-T-A stands for kick in the ass, kick up the backside. He talked about KITA factors in the sense of if as a manager, as a supervisor or as an organization, you don't provide the hygiene factors, you withhold them, you let things slip. It feels to your colleagues, to your employees, to your staff, like a kick in the ass. As you'd expect, there are negative and positive KETA factors. In fact, there are two kinds of negative KETA factors. The first are physical KETA factors, the things that are, are genuine uh, and as they appear to be. These are genuine, transparent interactions between the staff member who may or may not be feeling uh, demotivated and their supervisor, boss, manager. Examples are critical feedback that makes us feel bad. Requests to do work that we don't want to be doing. Reprimands or removal of resources that we need to do our job well. If your boss tells you that other people are getting an upgrade in their technology, but you're not, that's a kick in the ass. There are also negative psychological Kita factors. And these are indirect. The communication is in some way manipulative or deceitful. You feel like you can't trust exactly what's being said or implied. Examples are game playing by your boss or other colleagues, or your workplace and the work requirements confronting you with dilemmas, ethical problems, concerns over what the right thing to do, especially where you're not properly supported. And of course, feeling you're being subjected to stress, undue pressure in the workplace where you can't cope and you're not given the resources to cope is a psychological kick in the ass. But there are positive Kita factors as well. Positive Kita factors are things that have the semblance of motivating you, but all they do is address specific hygiene factor problems. As a result, they can fix demotivation, but they can never make you motivated. Salary adjustments, perks and bonuses, perhaps additional facilities, refreshing washrooms, refreshing kitchens, providing you with equipment that you need to do your job well. All of those give you a positive kick in the ass. Okay, get working. They'll never make you feel great, but they may stop you feeling bad about the workplace. So Hertzberg said that feeling motivated and feeling demotivated are not opposites. They're extreme ends of two separate spectrums. The spectrum from feeling unmotivated to motivated and the spectrum from feeling unmotivated to demotivated. If you understand that, you will understand why, despite the best efforts you give to motivating people, it won't make them feel good if the hygiene factors are not all in place. Please give us a thumbs up if you like this video. There's loads more great management courses content to come, so please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you don't miss any of it. I'll see you in the next video. And in the meantime, keep learning.